Hey, this is our first purple day. It is Monday, April 12th, and we have a room full of children for the first time all year, and they're completely normal and not insane at all. Uh, so let's see. I literally pulled the mask down so you could. Continuing our we're not insane theme. Uh, let's see, we're red and blue. We're going to be going to the library. This will be a slightly shorter video. Uh, still going through. Blue sheets are due. So if you're a kid from the class watching this and I'm missing the blue sheet, the torturing will happen until I get those from you. Uh, I don't think we're still missing the myth test. Or anyone, well, I do. They just don't come to class. So I can't ever tell them. It's hard to remind kids who never show up. Uh, you are going to need Outsiders book. We're going to be doing a bit more into the reading bits today. Um, you will be reading on your own coming up on Wednesday, Thursday of this week. I am reading with you today. I'll be reading with you for part of it on Wednesday, Thursday, and then you are going to have to do at some point read with your own brain, which I know is a scary thought, which is why there's audiobooks on Canvas for those of you who are scared of using your own brain to read. You can use someone else's brain to read, and hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Uh, we still have kids who are competing. We did drop the fastest time down from 12 seconds down to nine seconds. And we still have a three-way tie for last place at 20 seconds. Uh, and so it's fair only 20 seconds has been the time for us to beat. And let's see, from there we get to outsidery things. Let's get to outsidery things. Uh, let's see, blah. Oh, if you are wanting, and I'll remind you again, uh, oh, Thursday when you guys have to read, if you don't bring headphony things with you, you can't use audiobook just so that you are aware. So make sure you bring headphony things with you for audiobook. Paul Goblin, what's up? Uh, he's a PE teacher, so they all rotate. So it'll be either in the PE rooms, which is the wellness rooms, or be in the gym. He's in the, he's in the classrooms. Apparently, he's in the classrooms today. Okay. And you've had wellness, so you know where those are. All right. Good job, Paul Goblin. Um, and then again, let's see if you can hear. If you are wanting to use the Outsiders page for those, clicky there. And then down there, it has the, the YouTube audio links. You just go clicky, clicky. It's a guy reading MG and stuff like that. I have no problem if you want to use the audio book. That is absolutely fine. All right. Let's see. So we left. It's been a hot minute, like a week and a half since we've read together. Mm -hmm. So we left off with the gang, Greaser versus Social. Ooh, who's the main character telling us the story? Oh, Maybe it's on that one. And then you have his older brother. Ooh, which kid is Pony Boy's best friend? Derek, Johnny. Well, those are all Derek, names in front of you. This is a fun. Yep, yeah, again, those are all names. We're going to go with the Johnny. Is this Pony Boy and Johnny are always hanging out and doing stuff together from there? You know, it's gonna be, and then we have the pictures of the greasers look like that. And apparently, I've been told that the greasers are ugly. Uh, I did not know that we were face shaming them. Um, and apparently, the socials are attractive, except for Chad uh, and, and Blaine. Chad and Blaine that are up there. And the dog. Blaine. Uh, seemed like a very social what name. That could be a Steve. He does kind of have a Stevie look to him. Uh, and then we had the Red Corbair, which is following behind. Ooh, who was in the Red Corbair? The Socias. What did the what did the Socias offer to do for Pony Boy when they jumped out? And apparently they're very into cosmetology and they like trying to cut people's hair. Uh, I mean, if you're walking down the street and a random barber just jumped out and said, hey, you want a haircut? And then you'd probably be resistant at first, which is why he has four friends with him to hold you down because you don't want to get hurt during a haircut. Very dangerous. So that's why the other socials jumped out to hold him down. And they had to put the, the wadded cloth in his mouth so that he didn't get hair in his mouth. Hurt. Yes. Good call. So he doesn't get a hair in his mouth. It's like putting the barber thing down. See, sure. good teamwork on that one. Uh, and we had the pot, the busted pot bottle, which comes in again today, because they're going to try and get into another fight. Like every day, they're going to try and get into a fight and stab somebody. Um, that was the empty neighborhood lot where he got beat up, beat up, and then we got to chapter two. Chapter two, we get to where they were going down to the, so, uh, we steal the cools, which are the cigarettes, and we got to the drive-in restaurant. We try to figure out where all the different drive-in restaurants are like that. And that. Then we went to the drive-in movie theater. Ooh, which greaser? Is it done? Make sure. Good Yay. Job, Owen. Yay. Hey, put it over there on my X. Thank you. For the, wow, you guys are special children. For the drive-in movie theater, which greasers went to the theater? 
Johnny Dalian and Pony Boy. Right, so not Johnny Dally and Pony Boy. Ooh, did we get to? I think oh, here we did. Another another greaser shows up later. Did we get to that part. Two bit shows up. Johnny's backstory. And so we did. We got to the Johnny's backstory. Then I got to ooh. Who is it that the greasers meet at the movie theater? Um, these two uh, uh, nice. What kind of girls are they? Cherry. Socias. Cherry. Socias. And you for their name, you said it was? Cherry. Cherry. Marcia. Not bad. Marcia. Marcia. Usually it's, they usually go Cherry and not Cherry, uh, which is how it works in real life. If you watch TikTok, uh, there's always the unattractive friend. Uh, and so apparently you have Cherry and then you, there you go. And apparently the same thing here. Cherry's the hot one, and then you have not Cherry is the other one named Marcia. And so they get to hang out together. <laughs> We're going to meet their boyfriends. That comes up in a little bit. Gas jockey, that was the thing that I think Dally did. We thought like him like goes out and pumps the gas. And let's see, where did we leave off exactly, you guys? We are page 34. We are. So we are on page 34 with you guys. Uh, two bit showed up, and he uh, they said that he's. Uh, was grinning like a Cheshire cat or a Chessie cat. That's a reference to Alice in Wonderland. So that was the Cheshire cat he's referring to. And then Two Bit was going to, not Two Bit, Dally was going to get beat up. They talked about all the weapons they use. They talked about heaters. Uh, those are heaters, uh, pool sticks, and then chains. And, uh, they call them heaters, but sure, gun. Uh, your gat, if you will. Did we even get this far? Uh, we did. That's why I really just said it. And then. Blue Mustang, we talked, that was in the flashback on Johnny. So who was in the Blue Mustang with Johnny? Me. Socias. And then one of the Socias had something on his hand, which was a, a whole bunch of, oh, I think it was rings. Oh, nice one, of course, me too. Not from you, from the kid who just hit randomly yelling out different numbers. Take off that. I figured he liked numbers, so I was taking some numbers off. It seemed like the nicest thing to do. I thought we, I could play a numbers game. Uh, 34 is where we had stopped. We go back so we can almost finish out chapter two and get into chapter three. More numbers. Oh, I'm going to back up slightly. Ooh, I forgot about that. One more thing. Because they talk about the fact that after, I was back up. Johnny never walked by himself. This is going up above that little gap where it has. Says Johnny, who is one of the most law abiding of us, now carried in his back pocket a six inch switchblade. He'd use it too if he ever got jumped again. They had scared him that much. He would kill the next person who jumped him. Nobody was ever going to beat him like that again, not over his dead body. They're going to talk about switchblades a lot. You guys know what a switchblade is? No. Yeah. So if you're unfamiliar, I went out and got one so I could bring it in. Oh, oh snap! <laughs> Sorry, uh, it's a thing. I would never want to stab a child. Um, I was like, catch it. Uh, so for a switchblade, the way it works is the blade goes into the handle and there's like a little button on the side so that when you need to quickly stab somebody, you just hit the handle and the blade pops out. You get like quick little stabby stabby, you know, as you do. And then when you're done with it, there's a button you hit again really fancy ones you can hit the button and the blade goes back on its own but usually you don't get the super fancy ones you get the one you hit the button and you get to push it back in you're like pushy pushy and it clicks Is that real just one? be careful because when you push it in you're like pushy pushy push, ah! and it goes to your hand again and that was a poor choice Wait, is that real one we still talking problem with switchblade is typically boys carry them and boys tend to roughhouse with each other and boys tend to be dumb and so when you have one of these in your pocket and your friend ninja kicks you in the pocket, all of a sudden thing in your pocket goes Doink! and you're like, ah! so that was a bad thing. So they ended up changing the design. Ah! To a different type one called a rainbow blade. And the way the rainbow blade works as opposed to shooting straight out the end, it becomes like a little rainbow oh, thing. And so this one is so you can, you know, do your hand. Same idea. But this time, if it's in your pocket and your friend kicks you, it just gets stopped right there and does not shoot into your leg, thus impaling you and stuff like that. They are illegal in Indiana. They are not illegal in other states. As my children found out when we went to Tennessee, uh, apparently Tennessee is a pro-stabby state. 
Um, and so in Tennessee, because they have uh, Gatlinburg and what was the other one? Uh, Nashville. Uh, <laughs> they do have Nashville, uh, but it was. Uh, uh, but anyway, down there, they have a whole bunch of, like gift shops that my daughters ended up buying them because they thought they were really cool. And like, father doesn't buy his daughter a switchblade. Uh, and so you can have those things. Yeah. There's a third type, but it's not a switchblade. I have kids who ask about it all the time, which is what's called a butterfly knife. Oh, I know. And then the butterfly knife are the ones where you open them up and it has like little things that swing around. And so, again, not a real knife for those of you. For those of you who are wanting to start the student revolution, and you're like, I've got my weapon. Uh, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good. But the butterfly knives are the ones that you see in the movies where they flip them around like that. And then you toy like, toy like, blah, 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 and like stabby, stabby thing. This was one you can get on Amazon for like $6. It's a practice one. So that way you don't actually cut your hands up because it's real embarrassing when you go to mug somebody. You're like, no, ah! and you drop it on the ground and they just run from you. You're like, no, come back. I'm, I'm going to stab you. I swear. Uh, and then they're like already down the street, like, dang it, I gotta practice. So that's why you get your practice knife. So that way you can whip it out and intimidate them and you don't have to worry about it nearly as much. This one, not used in the book. This one is used in the book. Come on, Snipe. So this is the one. I'm not throwing you my knife. Down, child. I have a real knife I'll throw. How I weird. Right now. Uh, no, that, that. We're on page 34. Right. Right. <laughs> so now that we have introduced you guys to knives, now we get to continue. Finishing out chapter two. I had nearly forgotten that Cherry was listening to me. But when I came back to reality and looked at her, I was startled to find her as white as a sheet. All socias aren't like that. You have to believe me, Pony Boy. Not all of us are like that. Sure, I said. Come on, that's like saying all you greasers, how like Dallas Winston. I'll bet he's jumped a few people. Hmm, I digested that. Okay, it was true. Dally had jumped people. He told us stories about muggings in New York that made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. But not all of us were that bad. Cherry no longer looked sick, only sad. I'll bet you think the socias have it made. The rich kids, the West Side socias. I'll tell you something, Tony Boy, and it may come as a surprise. We have troubles you've never even heard of. You want to know something? She looked me straight in the eye. Things are rough all over. I believe you. You better get back out there at the popcorn or two bit will think I ran off of this money. We went back and watched the movie through again. Marcia and two bit were hitting it off fine. Both had the same scatterbrained sense of humor, but Cherry and Johnny and I just sat there looking at the movie and not talking. I quit worrying about everything and thought about how nice it was to sit with a girl I having to listen to her swear or beat her off at a club. I knew Johnny liked it too. He didn't talk to girls much. Right. Once, while Dallas was in reform school, Sylvia had started hanging on to Johnny and sweet-talking him. Steve got hold of her and told her if she tried any of her tricks with Johnny, he'd personally beat the tar out of her. Yeah. Then he gave Johnny a lecture on girls and how a sneaking little broad like Sylvia would get him into a load of trouble. As a result, Johnny never spoke to girls much. But... Oh, that was because he was scared of Steve or because he was shy. I don't know. I couldn't tell. Excuse me. I got the same lecture from Tubit after we'd picked up a couple of girls downtown one day. I think it was funny. Because girls are one subject. Even Derry thinks I used my head about. And it really had been funny because Tubit was half crock when he gave me the lecture. Uh, half crock means drunk. And he told me some stories about some, that made me want to crawl under the floor or something. But he'd been talking about girls like Sylvia and the girls he and Dally, the rest picked up at drive-ins and downtown. He never said anything about Sochi girls, so I figured it was all right to be sitting there with them. Even if they did have their own troubles, I really couldn't see what Socias would have to sweat about. Good grades, good cars, good girls. Madras, Mustangs, Corvairs. Man, I thought if I had worries like that, 
I consider myself lucky. Now, I know better now. Chapter 3. For those of you looking at home, there you go, page 37. Done. Yeah, name on the top. First and last. Yeah. Take it over there. Uh, put it on top of the balloon. That way I can grade it for you. Thank you, Sleeve. After the movie was over, it suddenly came to us that Cherry and Marcia didn't have a way to get home. Too bit gallantly offered to walk them home. The west side of town was only about 20 miles away, but they wanted to call their parents and have them come and get them. Okay, they make 20 miles sound like it's not that far. From here to downtown Indy, the Circle and the Children's Museum is like 13 to 15 miles. And they're just like, yeah, we'll walk you. I'm like, you don't walk 20 miles. Like, I mean, I guess you could, but yeah, but if, I mean, I guess if you're hanging out with hot girls, though, you'll just say anything. We'll walk 20 miles. It sounds like a great idea. I don't need legs anymore. They're optional. <clears throat> Sorry. But they wanted to call their parents and have them come and get them. Two bit finally talked them into letting us drive them in this car. I think they were still half scared of us. They were getting over it, though, as we walked to Two Bit's house to pick up the car. And it seemed funny to me that Socias, if these girls were an example, were just like us. They liked the Beatles and thought Elvis Presley was out. And we thought the Beatles were rank and Elvis was tough. But that seemed the only difference to me. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but Beatles, uh, the yeah. band from way back yeah, then, like the 60s, stuff like that. Yeah. So Socias are all about the Beatles, and the Greasers were all about Elvis Presley. So there's the two different groups in there. So Beatles, Elvis Presley. <laughs> Of course, greasy girls would have acted a lot tougher, but there was a basic sameness. About maybe it was money that separated us. No, Cherry said slowly when I said this. No, it's not just money. Okay, part of it is, but not all. You greasers have a different set of values. You're more emotional. We're sophisticated, cool to the point of not feeling anything. Nothing's real with us. You know, sometimes I'll catch myself talking to a girlfriend and realize I don't mean half of what I'm saying. I don't really think a beer blast and a river bottom is super cool, but I'll rave about one to a girlfriend just to be saying something. I never told anyone that. Huh. I think you're the first person I've ever really gotten through to. She was coming through to me, all right, probably because I was a greaser and younger. She didn't have to keep her guard up with me. Rat race is a perfect name for it. We're always going and going and going and never asking where. Did you ever hear of having more than you wanted so that you couldn't want anything else or then started looking for something else to want? It seems like we're always searching for something to satisfy us and never finding it. Maybe if we could lose our cool, we could. That was the truth. Socials were always behind a wall of aloofness. Careful not to let their real selves show through. I'd seen a social club rumble once. The socials even fought coldly and practically and impersonally. That's why we're separated, I said. It's not money, it's feeling. You don't feel anything, and we feel too violently. And, she was trying to hide a smile, that's probably why we take turns getting our names in the paper. Tubit and Marcia weren't even listening to us. They were engaged in some wild conversation that made no sense to anyone but themselves. Keep it in. You know what makes sense about the um, five questions for the e-learning assignment yeah. that was so popular? It's trying to get you guys thinking that way. Yeah, how dare you learn at school and like make connections and stuff like that? Amazing. Never going to catch on. I know. Good job. What? I have quite a rep for being quiet, almost as quiet as Johnny. Tubit always said he wondered why Johnny and I were such good buddies. You must make such interesting conversation, he'd say, cocking one eyebrow. You keeping your mouth shut and Johnny not saying anything. But Johnny and I understood each other without saying anything. Nobody but Soda could really get me talking. Until I met Cherry Bowers. I don't know why I could talk to her. Maybe for the same reason she could talk to me. Well, the first thing I knew, I was... Telling her about Mickey Mouse, Soda's horse. I never told anyone about Soda's horse. That was personal. Soda had this buckskin horse, only it wasn't his. It belonged to a guy who kept it at the stables where Soda used to work. Mickey Mouse was Soda's horse, though. The first day Soda saw him, he said, Huh, there's my horse. I never doubted it. 
I was about 10 then. Soda Pop is, of course, crazy. I mean it. He's always hanging around stables and rodeos, hopping on a horse every time he gets a chance. When I was 10, I thought that Mickey Mouse and Soda looked alike and were alike. Mickey Mouse was a dark gold buckskin, sassy and honored, but not much more than a colt. He'd come when Soda called him. He wouldn't come for anyone else. That horse loved Soda. He'd stand there and chew on Soda's sleeve or collar. Gosh, Soda Pop was crazy about that horse. He went down to see him every day. Mickey Mouse was a mean horse. He kicked other horses and was always getting into trouble. I've got me an ornery pony, she tell, so to tell him, rubbing his neck. How come you're so mean, Mickey Mouse? Mickey Mouse would just chew on his sleeve and sometimes nip him, but not hard. He may have belonged to another guy, but he was Soda's horse. Does Soda still have him? No, oh, he got sold. They came and got him one day and took him off. He was a real valuable horse, pure quarter. She didn't say anything else, and I was glad. I couldn't tell her that Soda had bawled all night long after they came and got Mickey Mouse. I'd cried too, if you want to know the truth, because Soda never really wanted anything except a horse, and he'd lost his. Soda had been 12 then, going on 13. He never let on to Mom and Dad how he felt, though, because we never had enough money. Usually had a hard time making ends meet. When you're 13 in our neighborhood, you know the score. I kept saving my money for a year, thinking that someday I could buy Mickey Mouse back for soda. <laughs> you're not so smart at 10 or 12 or 13. <clears throat> Sorry. You read a lot, don't you, Pony Boy? Cherry asked. I was startled. Yeah. Why? She kind of shrugged. Oh, I could just tell. I bet you watch sunsets, too. She was quiet for a minute after I nodded. Yeah, I used to watch them, too, before I got so busy. I pictured that, or tried to. Maybe Cherry stood still, watched the sunset while she was supposed to be taking the garbage out, stood there and watched and forgot everything else until her big brother screamed at her to hurry up. I shook my head. It seemed funny to me that the sunset she saw from her patio and the one I saw from the back steps was the same one. Maybe the two different worlds we lived in weren't so different. I saw the same sunset. Marcia suddenly gasped. Oh, sorry. No. Jerry, look what's coming. We all looked and saw a blue Mustang coming down the street. Johnny made a small noise in his throat. When I looked at him, he was white. Uh, we've talked about the blue Mustang before. I don't know if you guys remember. There's the picture I showed you guys last time. It's the same blue Mustang, if that helps you. Marcia was shifting nervously. What are we going to do? Cherry bit a fingernail. Stand here. There isn't much else we can do. Who is it? Tubit asked. The FBI? No, Cherry said bleakly. It's Randy and Bob. And, Tubit added grimly, a few other of the socially elite checkered shirt set. Your boyfriends? Sorry, <clears throat> sorry again. Your boyfriends? Johnny's voice was steady, but standing as close to him as I was, I could see he was trembling. I wondered why. Johnny's was a nervous wreck, but he never was that jumpy. You guys know why Johnny's jumpy? Is that he got jumped by? That's the guy I remember talking when he told that flashback of him and beat up really badly. The car that came by was a blue Mustang. The guy that had the big rings. We're going to meet them again in just a moment. Oh, he's got a shank on him. Chair in. We know that Johnny has a shank on him. Did you want to see the knife again? I can do it. No. Okay. Yeah, be I think Ellie wants to know. Right? Okay, I guess not. We'll wait till later. <clears throat> Jerry started walking down the street. Maybe they won't see us. Act normal. Who's acting? Two bit grin. I'm a natural normal. Wish it was the other way around, I muttered. Two bit said, Hey, don't get mouthy, pony boy. The Mustang passed us slowly and went right on by. Marcia sighed in relief. Huh. That was close. Jerry turned to me. Tell me about your oldest brother. You don't talk much about him. I tried to think of something to say about Derry. Shrugged. He wants to talk about him. He's big, handsome, and he likes to play football. So, I mean, what's he like? I feel like I know Soda from the way you talk about him. Tell me about Derry. And when I was silent, she urged me on. Is he wild and reckless like Soda, or is he dreamy like you? My face got hot as I bit my lip. Derry? That was Derry like? 
He's, I started to say he was a good old guy, but I couldn't. I just burst out bitterly. He's not like Soda Pop at all. And he sure ain't like me. He's hard as a rock and about as human. He's got eyes exactly like frozen ice. He thinks I'm a pain in the neck. He likes soda. Everybody likes soda. But he can't stand me. I bet he wishes he could stick me in a home somewhere. And he'd do it, too, if soda would let him. Two-Bit and Johnny are staring at me now. No, Two-Bit said, dumbfounded. Nah, pony boy, that ain't right. You got it wrong. Gee, Johnny said softly. I thought you and Barry and Soda got along real well. Well, we don't, I snapped, feeling silly. I knew my ears were red by the way they were burning, and I was thankful for the darkness. I felt stupid. Compared to Johnny's home, I got mine was heaven. At least Derry didn't get drunk and beat me up or run me out of the house. And I had soda pop to talk things over with. That made me mad. I mean, making a fool of myself in front of everyone. And you can shut your trap, Johnny K, because we all know you ain't one at home either, and you can't blame him. Johnny's eyes went round, and he winced as though I'd belted him. Two-Bit slapped me a good one across the side of the head and hard. You shut your mouth, kid. If you wasn't Soda's kid, brother, I would beat the tar out of you. You know better than to talk to Johnny like that. He put his hand on Johnny's shoulder. He didn't mean it, Johnny. I'm sorry, I said miserably. Johnny was my buddy. I was just mad. It's the truth, Johnny said with a bleak grin. I don't care. Shut up talking like that, Tubit said fiercely, messing up Johnny's hair. We couldn't get along without you. You can just shut up. It ain't fair, I cried passionately. It ain't fair that we have all the rough breaks. I didn't know exactly what I meant, but I was thinking about Johnny's father being a drunk and his mother a selfish slob and Tubit's mother being a barmaid to support him and his kid brother, sorry, his kid sister after their father ran out on him and Dally, wild, cunning Dally, turning into a hoodlum because he'd die if he didn't. And Steve, his hatred for his father coming out in his soft, bitter voice and the violence of his temper. Soda pop, a dropout so he could get a job and keep me in school. And Derry, getting old before his time, trying to run a family and hold on to two jobs and never having any fun. While the Socias had so much spare time and money that they jumped us and each other for kicks, had beer blasts and river bottom parties because they didn't know what else to do. Things were rough all over, all right, all over the east side. It just didn't seem right to me. No, no, to the uh, good-natured grin. The chips are always down when it's our turn. That's the way things are. Like it or lump it. Cherry and Marsha didn't say anything. I guess they didn't know what to say. He'd kind of forgotten they were there. Then the blue Mustang was coming down the street again, more slowly. Well, Cherry said resignedly, they've spotted us. The Mustang came to a halt beside us, and the two boys in the front seat got out. Yep, they were soldiers, all right. One had on a white shirt and a Madras ski jacket, the other a light yellow shirt and a wine-colored sweater. Do you guys know what wine-colored color is? No. Dark red. Yeah, like a dark red. Oh, well, I wanted to say that, so, but I didn't. Yep, yeah, that's what I was just asking. I mean, given, I'm guessing, most of you got uh, close to what Zachary's wearing, like that top uh, thing, probably a little bit darker than that. You guys not knowing the color of wine, perfectly fine. Not judging you. Like the color of yeah. Like yeah, that's fine. Uh, wine code. Soon, but not yet. I looked at their clothes and realized for the first time that evening that all I had was a pair of jeans and Soda's old navy sweatshirt with the sleeves cut short. I swallowed. Two bit heard the tuck in his shirt tail but stopped himself in time. He just flipped up the collar of his black leather jacket, lit a cigarette. The socials didn't even seem to see us. Jerry, Marsha, listen to us. The handsome black haired socials with a dark sweater began. Johnny was breathing heavily, and I noticed he was staring at the Sosha's hand. He was wearing three heavy rings. I looked quickly at Johnny, an idea dawning on me. I remembered it was a blue Mustang that pulled up beside the vacant lot, and that Johnny's face had been cut up by someone wearing rings. The Sosha's voice broke into my thoughts. Just because we got a little drunk last time, Cherry looked at me. 
A little? You call reeling and passing out in the streets a little. Bob, I told you, I'm never going out with you while you're drinking, and I mean it. Too many things could happen while you're drunk. It's me or the booze. The other soaps, a tall guy with a semi-beetle haircut turned to Marsha. So you can picture it. This is a semi-beetle haircut. The shaggy hair kind of thing. Prior to that, the most popular haircut was like mine. It was like a real short buzz haircut. So they started growing them out. They so have like this little shaggy haircut thing, which is now pretty common. That's like what most of you guys have is a semi-beetle haircut. But at the time, it was like a standout kind of thing. Guy with a semi, yeah, they were kind of weird. Semi beetle haircut turned to Marcia. Baby, you know we didn't get drunk very often. When she only gave him a cold stare, he got angry. And even if you're mad at us, there's no reason to go walk in the streets with these bombs. Two bit took a long drag on his cigarette. Johnny slouched and hooked his thumbs in his pockets, and I stiffened. We can look meaner than anything we want to. Looking tough comes in handy. Tubit put his elbow on Johnny's shoulder. Who are you calling bums? Listen, Gleasers, we got four more of us in the back seat. Then pity the back seat, Tubit said to the sky. If you're looking for a fight, Tubit cocked an eyebrow, but only made him look more cool. You mean if I'm looking for a good jumping, you outnumber us, so you'll give it to us. Well, he snatched up an empty bottle, busted off the end, and gave it to me then reached in his back pocket and flipped out his Swiss blade. Try it, pal. No, Cherry cried. Stop it. She looked at Bob. We'll ride home with you. Just, just wait a minute. Why, Tubit demanded. We ain't scared of him. Cherry shuddered. I can't stand fights. I can't stand them. I pulled her to one side. I couldn't use this, I said, dropping the pop bottle. I couldn't ever cut anyone. I had to tell her that because I'd seen her eyes when Tubit flipped out his switch. I know, she said quietly. We'd better go with them. Pony boy, I mean, if I see you in the hall at school or someplace and, and I don't say hi, I mean, it's not personal or anything, but I know, I said. We couldn't let our parents see you at all. You're a nice boy and everything. It's okay, I said. Wishing I was dead and buried somewhere, or at least that I had on a decent shirt. We aren't in the same class. Just don't forget that some of us watch the sunset, too. She looked at me quickly. I could fall in love with Dallas Winston. I hope I never see him again. I will. She left me standing there with my mouth dropped open and the blue mustang droomed off. We walked on home, mostly in silence. I wanted to ask Johnny if those were the same socials that had beaten him up, but I didn't mention it. Johnny never talked about it. We never said anything. Pause there. So, pop bottle again. So they talk about the fact, this is going to keep popping back up, the whole pop bottle thing. I did some looking online, and I found a picture of a guy who'd been stabbed with a pop bottle. If you look at the end, that has like these random multiple sharp edges to it. When you get attacked with one, it ends up looking like a claw mark, like some kind of crazy pack. So those are slashes that went across. That's a belly button. Uh, there's you know, those be little slash marks that went across it from the, the bottles. So not you don't really stab with it as much like a slash and cutting thing with it. Again, whenever you guys get into your street fight, and make sure you guys are well protected so you guys don't get yourself hurt. But Break the bottle. You don't stab with it. It's a slashy cutting. Yes, but thing. but there aren't many. Gla those glasses and in, in an emergency, you use the plastic one and you just badonk them on the head. And that'll confuse them. And you're like, badonk, badonk. I'm like, what are you doing? You're like, I'm a fairy. And you just keep badonking it like casting a spell on them. And there's a chance it could work. Or they're going to kill you. But at least you're going to go out having a good time. Uh, oh, and that last part when Cherry says that she could fall in love with Dallas Winston. Remember, her and Dallas Winston, he was a complete jerk to her. And your thought might be, Mr. Bogat, why would she say that? You might be unaware of this, but sometimes girls like the bad boy. Uh, and so Dally is sort of the ultimate bad boy. And so this is her sort of doing that whole, I've got a crash on the bad boys. And that's where we're going to stop for today. That'll be our stoppy point with big stabby stomach on there. Ah. <sighs> So let's see. Uh, uh, we will no homework to read yet. Our checkpoint is going to be end of chapter four by Friday.
We're not there yet. And we're going to do more reading of chapter three. But then part of class on Wednesday slash Thursday is you reading on your own, either paper book or audio book. But we're going to have you finish chapter four on that Wednesday, Thursday to get ready for Friday. Those of you who are standing up. Bye. Yeah.